Awesome. Well, thank you all for being here today, sharing some of your time with us during your lunch break. So I am going to talk today about networking on social media. So as Ruth mentioned, I work with business owners. So I'm a marketing strategist and I work primarily with solopreneurs and small business owners. So I'm getting an Ooh, I'm echo. Getting feedback. Yeah. Can that somebody mute? Can everyone mute while I'm presenting? And then we'll yeah, we all mute? End for Q&A. That would be great. Ruth, you might be able to, I don't, I don't think I'm host. I don't think I can mute people. It might be um, Arita. Doesn't look like I can mute people. There we go. Okay. All right. I think that's better. Okay. So if you guys don't mind staying on mute while I present, that would be great. So we don't have feedback issues, but I'm definitely going to save time for Q&A at the end. Um, you can feel free to put questions in the chat as we're going. If you're afraid you're going to forget something, that's fine. Um, so just a little bit about me. I'm Christy. I'm a marketing strategist. As I said, I mainly work with solopreneurs and small business owners to help them work smarter and not harder on their digital marketing. So yes, that includes social media. It also includes a whole host of other things like blogs and websites and email marketing and all of that good stuff. For the presentation today, I really tried to take a lot of what I teach business owners to apply to their business, but frame it also in a way that if you're not running your own business, you can be applying the same concepts to yourself as if you're you know, selling yourself, if you're out in the market looking for a job. Um, so hopefully uh, everything you see, like the tie-ins that, that really apply to both. Um, and as Ruth mentioned, I'm a huge networker. That's really how I've built my business is on my networking, which is a little ironic since I'm a marketer. Um, my marketing processes for my business help support my networking. So I have a lot of those funnels and processes and all of that in place to really help support the networking that I do because I'm big on making personal connections with people. And so that's a lot about what we're going to be talking about today is how to use social media to really make those meaningful connections and getting in front of people. A little tidbit about me. I do like using memes, especially when I'm presenting to groups. And so um, I had to share this meme. Um, you don't do social media for business. Tell me more about how you plan to stay relevant. Um, so again, this applies if you have your own business or if you are marketing yourself. Um, for, for the next job that you're looking for. Whatever it is, you really need to be on social media. Um, that is that is first and foremost, it's crucial. I think we probably all know that. That's probably why you're here is because you know you need to be on social media in some capacity. And I'm a big proponent of finding how to do it in a way that is realistic and attainable for you. Um, so that's a lot of how I work with my clients is, you know, here's my recommendations. How does that fit within your ability and skill set and what you can commit to? So it's kind of this collaborative process is how we come up with the strategy and the plan. So we are here to talk about social media because it is critical. Social media can really help you do a bunch of things. So it can help you reach new people, right? Getting in front of new audiences that you don't have the ability to do sitting from your desk um, at home or at your office or wherever it is, reaching new people first and foremost. Showcasing your thought leadership, that is a big thing that I am huge on. It's all about creating value for your audience it's not just about selling yourself all the time. So we're gonna jump into more details about how you accomplish this um, in my slides here, but showcasing your thought leadership, showing that you're an expert in your space is really important and social media is a great vehicle to do that. Which kind of leads into the third bullet here, which is building your reputation. Um, I was just doing a webinar series last week and I was, I was telling everyone, you know, it's easy to get caught up in the metrics of your posts and your social media presence and how many followers do you have and how much engagement do you have? which I'm a big fan of. I love numbers. I, I use data with my clients all the time. Data is important, but just as important is showing up consistently and understanding that the content that you're posting is also building your reputation. So if you've been posting on LinkedIn or whatever platform consistently for months on end and you feel like, well, I'm getting some engagement, but it's not really what I want. Okay. Let's work on getting you more engagement, but let's also remember that what you're doing is really building up your portfolio and your reputation so that if you were to meet somebody out at a networking event in person or maybe on Zoom and they say, huh, I want to go check out this person on social media and they go and they look you up, you have all of this content that you've been posting that just helps boost your credibility in your space. So I think that's a real, another really important aspect to remember with social media as well. All right, so that's all great. How do I do that? That's what we're going to talk about. So that's what social media can do for you. How do you accomplish that? I broke it down into 
a three-step process. I'm obviously simplifying a lot for the purpose of this presentation, uh, but the first thing is really getting a plan in place. That's crucial. Um, so we're going to talk about that first. Then we're going to talk about creating that right mix of content so you're not being super salesy and people just tune you out because you keep saying the same thing over and over again about how great you are, how awesome your product or your service is, or why someone should hire you. Um, those things have a time and a place, but it's not all of the time. So we're going to talk about the right mix of content. And then we're going to talk about the importance, the importance of engagement, because it's not just enough to be posting all the time. You also have to engage with people. So this is kind of our three-step process we're going to be following today. All right. So first things first, getting a plan in place. I truly believe if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail when it comes to your social media presence. So often people have the best of intentions, but they don't have a specific plan or strategy. And so what does it do? It falls to the bottom of the list. And then you're not being as consistent as you wanted to be. You're not showing up as often as you want. You're not engaging with people as much as you wanted. And then you're really not getting the results that you had hoped for in engaging in social media to begin with. So, Using a tool to help you plan is really important. I am a huge fan of finding the right tool to suit your needs. I don't believe that there is one tool that fits everybody's needs. So whether it is a hard copy calendar that you're writing on, whether it is a spreadsheet, whether it's a template, whatever's gonna work for you, use that tool. Um, I do have a resource as well, which I'll put in the chat when we're done. It's a free downloadable guide and template that I have created. Um, take a look. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, you know, there's other ones out there. You can do a quick search online if you feel like you need a little more structure than just an open-ended calendar or a spreadsheet to start with. But using a tool is really critical. I always say to commit to a weekly goal for posting. I feel like one of the most common questions I get when I'm talking about social media is how often do I need to be posting? Ideally, you're posting every day. If that's not doable and realistic for you, then set a different goal, but you have to have a goal. So if it's two days a week, okay, fine. Pick Tuesday and Thursday or Monday and Friday or whatever it is, pick two days and stick to that. I always suggest picking certain days of the week so that it's like, it's in your brain. Okay, these are the two days that I have to be posting. If you are in a business or related to a business or something where there are events that are happening, I always say to start with events. So on your calendar, put in the events and then work backwards, right? You wanna be posting as you're leading up to the event. So first and foremost, get those events on your calendar and plan some social media posts around that and then fill in with daily themes. So I'm really just scratching the surface here. Again, we don't have a ton of time. Um, I'm actually doing a whole workshop on creating a social media strategy and plan. Um, so I can share the link with, for you, with you as well for that if you're interested. Um, but filling in with daily themes is a good way, again, to stick to those specific days of the week and start building out your content. Um, so whether it's Monday motivation or Tuesday tips, I stick to Tuesday tips on LinkedIn. I post a video every Tuesday with a tip uh, related to marketing. So that's those are just a couple of examples. And then the last piece here is creating content at least two weeks ahead of time. Again, getting back to that, you know, you have to have a plan or it's just it's going to fall through. It's going to fall to the bottom of the list and not get done. So I do recommend creating content at least two weeks out. Um, one week even is good. Um, if you're a person who likes to kind of do things as you go, one week's good, but you have to at least get out in front of it a little bit. Otherwise, you know, life, life happens, right? Personal things come up, work emergencies come up, things happen, and then the week gets away from you and you don't have any content out. So planning ahead is crucial. The next piece is creating the right mix of content. So I always like telling people about the 80-20 rule as it can apply to your content. So 20% of your content can be about you. It can be that more salesy stuff. Um, here's this program I'm offering. Here's this package that I have. Here is um, a testimonial of someone who worked with me, right? That's really about me at the end of the day. Um, but 80% of your content should not be about you and your offers. And the reason is, is because if people feel like they're being sold to all the time, they're going to tune you out, right? If you think about all the ways that we all have marketing coming at us on a daily basis, it's, it's everywhere. And if we feel like we're being sold to and we keep seeing the same message all the time, we just tune it out and we scroll right past it. So it's really important to be a thought leader, to be an industry expert and a trusted resource in your space. You do that by not talking about yourself all the time. You do that by sharing other articles with your 
your, you know, your takeaway from the article that you read or sharing, um, you know, industry specific association content. Um, that's a great way to help showcase your thought leadership, writing blog posts that are, again, aren't about you, but they're about solving a problem for your audience. Those are ways that you can really help showcase your expertise in your given area. The last piece I put in here is be empathetic. Again, this goes back really to being a thought leader too, but putting yourself in your audience's shoes. You shouldn't just be talking about the topics that you enjoy talking about. You should be talking about the things that are helpful to your audience. Um, and if you are a job seeker, right, you should be talking about things related to the industry that you're in to show that you have a pulse on the, on the latest news and trends and happenings in that space. You wanna showcase that so people can see it. So that is a bit about content and finding the right mix. The last piece here, and then we'll jump into Q&A, is engage, engage, engage. So again, it's not enough to just be posting consistently. That is important and you have to do that. That's like, first and foremost, get your schedule, create your content, you wanna be consistent. You also need to be engaging with people. So you want to follow industry related hashtags, you want to follow thought leaders, companies, associations, again, anyone who's already in that space that you're in or looking to get into, you want to follow all of those people, share their comments, share their posts with your own, you know, takeaways or two cents on the topic, um, comment on their posts, start conversations with people. Um, those are really important things to be doing. Just from the standpoint of building relationships and also from the standpoint of the you know, backend algorithms that help you get seen and all of that, it's important to engage. Meaningfully comment on other people's posts. Um, that's what I was saying, you know, making sure that you are asking questions or re, you know, ask a clarifying question. I've done that on other people's posts. Like sometimes I'm like, I kind of get what you're saying, but like, I'm a little unclear on that. Great opportunity to post a comment on there. Can you clarify this piece for me? I'm not quite sure. Or you know, sharing your experience related to someone else's experience. Um, meaningfully comment. It's not enough to just say, yes, I agree. It's better than nothing, but you got to put some effort in. And then personally reaching out and asking for virtual coffee meetings. Again, this gets back to the networking piece. I can't tell you how many people I have met, especially this past year alone on LinkedIn. And I've reached out and just said, hey, can we, you know, hop on a 30 minute Zoom call? I'd love to learn more about you and your business. Right. I'm not saying, hey, can we meet so I can pitch you on my business? No, I'm not doing that. I'm taking a genuine interest because I want to learn about them and their business. And maybe in the course of that conversation, there's a chance for me to talk about what it is that I do and who I work with. And maybe they know someone who could use my services. You never know. There's always I believe that there's always a valuable nugget that you can get out of any conversation that you have. But you have to reach out. And I feel like so many people are nervous and like are afraid to do this what's the worst that somebody's going to say? No, I don't have time. Or they just won't answer you. Okay. That's, you know, that's not the end of the world. I have personally found in my experience, the people who I've reached out to and like genuinely wanted to talk to, they've all said yes. And I've walked away with some really valuable LinkedIn connections that I follow all the time now. And I engage on their stuff and they engage on my stuff. It just creates this like nice little community really um, in the space. So it just helps helps meet new people and get in front of people and make those meaningful connections. So that's everything I had. It was a little bit short, but I am hoping that uh, there are a lot of questions. So I will pause my share. Let's see, stop share, there we go. Okay. Are there any questions in the chat, Ruth? I haven't been paying attention. I've been- No, of... but I wanted to say that you make some, do you make some really, really good points? And <clears throat> there are, a lot of parallels between looking for um, clients and looking for a job, because in both cases, we we really are trying to understand what um, what people need, whether it's because we want them to be a customer, or because we want them to bring us into their company. And I think this is the number one thing that is a problem sometimes in job search is people want to explain what they do, you know, what their tasks are. And they don't really think about whether it's relevant to the person that's reading it. Um, and I think in business too, it can be hard because we want to write about the stuff that we are interested in. 
well, if I'm interested in it, everyone else is going to be interested in it. Well, it's just not necessarily the case. There, you, you need to find out what the pain is that the people are suffering that you want to serve and offer the solution. And that's really what you have to write about. And sometimes it's stuff that, you know, isn't stuff you would concentrate on, but you know that they need it. So you want to talk to them about it. Maybe it seems obvious to you, but it's probably not obvious to them, right? And I, 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 I also think that engaging can be very difficult on social media because it doesn't, it's not the same as when you meet somebody in person and there's sort of a flow, you're standing in front of each other and somebody's talking and you're responding. This is, this is sort of a little bit artificial because you know, you're writing it down, you can't see the person. It seems strange if you're not used to it. Um, but I gotta tell you, I've had, I have really gotten some conversations going with people just because I saw somebody else's post and I was like, I have to weigh in on this. So I would weigh in and then four people would respond and go, I think you're right. Or somebody would go, yeah, but you forget this point. And then a whole conversation would start, you know? And then yeah. sometimes it would, it would matriculate into like, we'd get on the phone or we do a Zoom or something. I mean, it's, it's, you just don't even know. So I, I'm curious to hear what you all, what your experiences have been or just difficulties that you've had or how you've navigated. Anybody? Anyone like brave enough to share? Yeah, I'd like to mention. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's a funny thing with social media. Uh, I, once I start it, I'm fine. But to get the energy and the desire to actually go ahead and do something, that's the hard part. So once I get rolling and I'm posting, I'm doing all this stuff, and then somehow something happens, and I don't want to go back and do that again. So it's getting the energy to do it. But once I do it, uh, it's okay. Yeah, it, I know <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. It's like anything you look at it and go, oh my God, this is so much work. I don't know, but it's not as much as you think. And I think it's kind of fun. I want to go back to Ruth, to your point about um, just be like, it might seem common sense to you, but it's not to everyone else. And, and to Jim's point about like getting the momentum yeah. to start going, I find that I feed off of the networking meetings that I have and people that I've talked to, I take bits and pieces away from those conversations and make a note that I want to make a social media post about that. Because if I'm talking to one person about it, chances are there's other people who are experiencing the same thing. And it might be something so simple that I'm like, well, yeah, of course everyone knows that like you need to have a plan for social media. Like mm -hmm. maybe they do in the back of their mind, but they need to be reminded. And a lot of people don't know that. So don't ever assume that what you want to share is like, well, everyone knows that because that's usually not the case. I also, um, I know a lot of you who are on this, who are on this Zoom and, and I know that you have a lot of really interesting viewpoints on different things. And I think it would be great if you would just do some posts about them. You know, what, what you're, maybe, maybe you just, you've observed something in the course of your work or made a discovery, or there's just something that you see happening all the time and you wanna talk about it you know, go ahead and do it because you just don't know who it's going to resonate with. So one of the questions that I have is how, you know, on LinkedIn, for instance, how do you get a wider distribution? How do you get more comments and likes and more views? Great question. First and foremost, I find so often that people don't include a CTA or call to action. And I see this in email blasts. I see it on social media all the time. People are like, but nobody responded. Okay, well, did you ask a question? Like, did you, did you tell them what you want them to do? Because if you don't ask a question or be specific about what action you want somebody to take after reading your post, then what were they supposed to do? Like, if you're not clear on it, they're not going to know what you're expecting them to do. So I think first and foremost, asking questions. Now you could say, okay, I've been asking questions. No one's engaging. Okay. Well, then you want to look at other things like hashtags. Hashtags are super important, especially on LinkedIn. You should be following at least a handful of hashtags that are related to you in your space and the audience that you're trying to reach, because that is going to help you see that content in your feed, which helps you engage, first of all. Um, but then you want to be using those hashtags when you're posting, because same thing. If people are following those hashtags, then your content 
is going to get served up to them in their feed, whether or not you're connected with them based on the hashtags that they're following. So, so when you say huge. follow a hashtag, you mean what? Click on it periodically to see what's posted under it? So you can actually officially follow a hashtag on LinkedIn. Um, let me just... Yeah, this is an interesting just... question. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me actually, let me just screen share again quick. Sure. That's all right. That way I can show you exactly what I'm looking at. All right. So LinkedIn, Lindsay White, I love her. This is somebody I met on LinkedIn and now we're like, we're great referral partners for each other. Okay. So if you're on LinkedIn and you scroll down and you look in this bottom left section, um, if you do it on mobile, I can't recall exactly where you find this, but followed hashtags. These are the hashtags that I'm following. Oh, it's not scrolling over here. So what you can do, if I click on that, it's gonna show me all the ones I'm following. Um, so let's just look at Solopreneur is a big one for me because I like, so let me, so that's the other thing too, right? When you start typing a hashtag in, it'll give you all of these examples. So if you type it and then you click on it, it will tell you how many people follow that hashtag. So if you look up a hashtag and there's only like 20 people who follow it, probably not that relevant for you to be using in your content because only 20 people are, are following that. So make sure that you're choosing hashtags that have a good number of people following them. So there's this amount of people. If I wasn't already following this hashtag, it would say follow. So you just click on that and then you're following that hashtag and then you're gonna start seeing that content come up in your feed. I also see that post that Chris Hughes wrote right there. That's kind of on point. <laughs> I Chris Hughes is one of my Chris. favorite people. He's yeah, another person. I met him on LinkedIn. We've had coffee. We've had virtual coffee chats. He's in um, Texas. He's interviewed me on his solopreneur spotlight show that he does every week. Um, I see his stuff all the time, engage with it all that. He's fabulous. He's a great person to follow if you're trying to boost your presence on LinkedIn. Love but right stuff. here, he's saying it's easy to assume that you're not having an impact. I, I got to tell you, it can be very surprising sometimes what your content does, you know? Yeah. The other thing too, in there's like, I've, I've seen Chris post about this and some other people who I know are like hardcore LinkedIn people. People are not happy lately because LinkedIn made some changes to the algorithms, which makes it a little bit harder to get found organically, which stinks because that was one reason why so many of us gravitated towards this platform because it's easy to get found. Um, you can still get found. It's just it's oh, yeah. complicated things a little bit. But one of the big, one of like the key things in that I've read about that people are saying is a key change in this algorithm update is that you need to get someone to comment and interact with your post within like the first hour of posting it. And that helps get your mess, get your post in front of more people. So if you have someone who's going to engage, engage with your stuff right away, that's in the other thing too, to keep in mind is when are you posting? So you want to be posted. You don't just want to post anytime you want to post when people are more likely to engage with it right away, because that's just going to help amplify your message and get it in front of more people. Is that helpful? Do you have any other follow-up questions to that? Well, it's great advice. Um, one of the things that uh, some of my peers are doing, we've joined a group of about, it's limited to 50. And so we're notified each time one of us posts so that we can go in and then really quickly add comments onto the post, which then hopefully gets wider distribution. So- Oh, that's a good idea. Is that a setting in LinkedIn? No, it's uh, so actually, this is one of my peers is is just created that and offered oh, wow. up to 50 of us to be able to, you know, form a group and we get contacted then when when uh, one of the somebody in the group posts and we're encouraged to post at least three times a week. I have I have seen this a lot. Some people refer to it as pods. Uh -huh. So people are creating these little like pop-up things where it's, and someone actually invited me to theirs and I, I joined it and basically what it was, people do it differently. I was on one before where they did it all through Slack. And then I was on one where they just did it in a LinkedIn group message. Um, I will say it can be helpful if you find the right people. 
I will also say that the one that I was a part of most recently on a LinkedIn group chat, it didn't make sense for my business. And so I left because it was like an HR professional and someone in like the engineering space and someone, it, it was just very diverse in the content that they were posting. And it didn't really jive with like my audience and my business. And not to say that we all have to be in unison, but it just, it felt too tangential and like forced for me to like go in and comment on somebody's post when it really has nothing to do with the people that I work with or, you know, Mm -hmm. the businesses that I serve. Um, So I think they can be valuable. My advice would be to make sure it's aligned with your business. Yeah, like I say, it's a, it's a group of my peers that do the right. same thing they do in business. So, yeah. I have noticed that the, there are these little groups that seem to cluster together like swarms of bees, <laughs> little little groups of bees, like one person will comment and all the same people will comment and then somebody else will and then all the other people will comment. It's like, and I sometimes feel like that's just a little bit forced. Like I understand the algorithm reason, reason the algorithm algorithmic reason for it yes but it 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 is a little it's just a little strange (laughs) to me (laughs) I'm trying to remember now because I had a friend ask me about this because she's trying to like boost her presence on LinkedIn and she like made up this funny name for it and I can't think of it right now but she she basically kind of felt like that too she's like it seems fake like people don't seem genuine so yeah I think it all depends I also wonder how people have yeah. And how do people have time to be on there all the time? It's like, I start, I, I mean, I'm just going to say it. I start to ask myself the question, like, do you have clients? Like, do you, how do you have time to be on LinkedIn all the time? I don't know. Just yeah. Me. Another thing, I mean, Ruth knows that I, I advise people on this, but you know, if you're going to be posting at eight o'clock in the morning or whatever time on LinkedIn, it's a good idea to be engaging with people right before and or right after you post um, because that just helps all of that back end stuff of like, oh, okay, you're being active. And now someone's going to see that I commented, Ruth's going to see that I commented on her post. And so she's probably going to be more likely to see what I just posted and kind of that whole feels like kind of a big puzzle that no one really quite knows yes, there's how it a- all fits together. <laughs> There's a, um, there's a group, and I think it's on Facebook, ironically, LinkedIn Action Heroes. It's run by That's Andy funny. Foote with an E, hmm. F-O-O-T-E. And he is just, a, he's a, 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 he is obsessed with LinkedIn and he knows everything about it. And he's constantly investigating it. And people just ask all kinds of bizarre little technical questions about LinkedIn. And sometimes I read it and go, oh my God, I don't have time for this. <laughs> yeah. There is a certain level of like, you just need to show up consistently and engage with people and know that it will all come back around. Christy, quick question for you. Trying to understand, I think a comment you made about uh, posting within an hour. Um, so, so you post something and you, you know, and you go on to the next thing you're not on. I wasn't quite clear what you meant the hour is commenting on other people's posts or if you post something you want to boost engagement, what's the, what's that golden hour that should we do anything else? Or did I not completely understand that advice? No, great question. I probably wasn't clear on that. So the idea is that you want someone else to comment on your post within an hour of you posting it. Um, it might actually even be shorter than that. I see. That's the thing. I know like a little bit about the algorithms and things like that, but I don't like live in those spaces where people get into all the nitty gritty. Um, 